Assalamu alaikum. Again, my name is Imam Mahdi. In continuing with Imam Mahdi, the introduction to America and the world's destruction by the law of Allah al Quran. At the political level, America has always been oppressive from its initial start, from the colonial period. 1441 to 1619. During this period, America's foundation had destroyed this native land, the native land of Indians and the Moorish Empire. The Moorish Empire at that time extended all the way from Egypt to Morocco to cross the Atlantic Ocean to all that which we call now the United States of America. This here is the black man's so-called black African American land from day one before the arrival of any European person, the Natives American. And of, yes, of course, some were brought later on the ship after they, the so-called European discovered that this was a new land because the Europeans at that time did, were not wanted in their country because of their life, the savage life that they lived at that particular time. The king, the queen of their era did not want certain of their own kind in their land. There was criminals. They lived a nasty life, a savage life, an unclean life. So to clean out their country, they sent all those people who they did not want in their country to this land across the Atlantic Ocean with their diseases and their ill behavior. And this is what America, what we call America, get its ill behavior. Like I say, it's beast behavior. An insane. Bestiality. By homo transsexuality. You understand? This is where all this behavior comes from. All this behavior. A pride, greed, lust, anger, envy, and jealousy, sloth, gluttony. This is where America originate its behavior from these folks. And so when they couple it with religion, and religion by establishing here in this country, it gave them some type of civilization to deal with each other. And that's why the religion itself, as I said, Christianity was not never sanctioned by God himself. So they had to adjust God's law to suit their way of getting along with each other. To continue these practices. Because you have to change God's law to only to continue these practices. Because God's law forbid all these practices. And that's the virtue of Al-Quran. Al-Quran has not ever been tampered with. Again. This is the Quran, the Holy Quran. It was revealed to Muhammad Ibn Abdullah over 1400 years ago. This book is perfect. You have your Arabic on one side, as I once said, and you have your English on the other side. The Arabic is the original language. The English, wherever the book is in the world, it will take on that language with the original language on the opposite side. So if you have doubt in your language, you can always learn the original language and get with authority, the firm authority of what Allah has revealed. This book is from the decree of God himself. This is God talking to you. This is Allah, the God of creation who created all things talking to you. 
telling you to hear, obey, and understand this book. And he said, whoever do not hear and understand, who do, whoever do not hear, obey, and understand this book, he will make him unclean. See, there's, there is no compulsion in religion. That means there is no force in religion. So I'm inviting you to Islam. I'm inviting you to what Allah has given me for your salvation. And those who do not come to this invitation, then my invitation is a warning to you. A warning to your destruction. Because Allah has already revealed your destruction in His book, in His revelation. Not just the Al-Quran, but in the Torah, which is mentioned in Al-Quran, that the Jews claim. But that's the book of the Muslim too. Of his time. To the, the Zambur. Which are the Proverbs. The books of David and Solomon. They are Muslims. This book from the Muslims. And the Injil. Which the book was revealed to Jesus. The book, the gospel. That's the book of the Muslim. It's revealed in Al-Quran. All these people that I mentioned to you. They, are, they were and still is today. I believe in Muslims. Because you can't kill a Muslim. He transformed into other levels. A Muslim do not die. Right now, Jesus, Muhammad, all the prophets that I mentioned, Adam and Jesus, Noah, Hus, Ali, Ibrahim, Ishmael, Isaac, Yaqub, Yusuf, Ayu, Shuaib, Musa, Harun, Luke, Yunus, Ali, Say, Zukafi, Dawood, Sulu, Iman, Elisa, Zachariah, Yahya, Isa, and Muhammad, Ibn Abdul, are right here as I speak to you right now. All the believers that ever live are right here, right now, as I speak to you right now. And they are reaffirming to you that Christianity is not a religion of God. Judaism is not a religion of God. And they all taught you to worship the oneness of God. Jesus himself. And this is what the politics got to be based upon. The law of God. Not upon your opinion. Right? You could ratify laws. Abolish laws. You can't ratify no law in the Quran. You can't abolish nothing in the Quran. All I say, if you add to it, you're a curse. You take away from it, you're a curse. You understand? If you weaken the truth that I'm bringing, how Allah give us to bring to you, the people. If I weaken it, add something to it, or make, uh, come to you soft with it. Just so I can probably get a perk here, a perk there, to, to squeeze my way through society. Allah curse you for that. There's no weakening the truth. I can't come to you with a, a, a weak version of the truth. The truth is the truth. And that's why, as I said earlier, to be a man, you have to have the truth, justice, peace, freedom, love, joy, unity, and success. That's what brings about happiness. As I said, I can't show you no love, and yet there's no justice in the way society is oppressing so-called black people in America, or with the 14th Amendment, Section 4. If you use that to oppress, then there's no justice. So I can't show you no love. First, the truth is, is what I'm speaking to you. The truth is you got to re rectify your situation. And that's when justice comes in. The justice has to be served. And you talk about the um, Supreme Court justice and all these people that the so-called president elect and put into office. When they come into office. Judges, they are not no judges. They don't have the, the common sense to rectify what is wrong. And this is a judge? Right here in the state of South Carolina, the, a black woman by the name of Brittany Newsom, who they call Bree Newsom, Brittany Ann Bree Newsom, climbed the flagpole, brought down the Confederate flag. Because the legal authorities in this state don't have the mind to make good judgment, to bring it down themselves. So she had to take the initiative to bring down that Confederate flag. Regardless of, of what might happen, she knew that that flag had to be brought down. She climbed the flagpole and brought the Confederate flag down at the state capitol in South Carolina in the United States of America. This is a woman. This is a woman who was assisted by a, another brother. So this brother who assisted her, helping her, 
And they brought down this flag. Because those who consider themselves in authority in this state, they don't have the mind to make right judgment. That's why this state itself is collapsing. And that's why they set up the, the, uh, the uh, at-will employment. They can hire you at-will, fire you at-will. They ain't got to have no reason. So that's how they keep their the slaves into slavery. And they can talk to you any kind of way on their job. At least they think so. You understand? And you wonder why people go into these plants and, and uh, they had confrontation with their, with their employer and they come back and kill their employer and, and other administrators. Because of this practice. And see, people don't believe things will happen to them until it happened to them. And that's their mindset. And when you have people in authority, and I'm talking at the political level, and when you have people in authority who are supporting and reinforcing, that's why they call law enforcement, to enforce the illegal laws that is sought in America. So when you have the prison industries and the killing of of black males by police officers in this country. Why? Because you're still a slave. And the Constitution reaffirmed that. The Emancipation Proclamation did not free you. It freed you from individual ownership. You understand? Individual ownership. Now, the United States have taken up your ownership, and that's what the 14th Amendment in Section 4 is all about. That you're still slavery up under the United States Constitution. Now, the 13th Amendment are for people who commit crime. So if you commit a crime and you go to prison, yeah, you're a slave because of the crime you commit. You're a double slave. If you're a minority, I mean, say so a black person, a so-called black African-American descendant of slavery, you're a double slave. Because now you're a slave when you're here, now you're a slave in there. And wherever the jurisdiction of America is, when they say wherever the jurisdiction of America is, America is all over the world trying to steal and confiscate land just like they did what we now call the United States of America. That's why they put army bases all over the world and, and place their flag on people's soil. You understand? And that's why you have Muslims all over the world attacking and killing soldiers and attacking America because they trying to put, practice the same tricks they practice here on this continent on other lands. So, when you're dealing with the politics, as I said, all this was originated from the colonial period, 1441 to 1619. Then you had the Colonial Revolutionary War period. And you people have, have people like uh, uh, Prince Hall during that period, and many others, they came into Masonism. And they called them the Freemasons. And, they, and, and the Americans did not want to get them the charter. So, the, the French over in the foreign land, um, brought Prince Hall in. And eventually uh, gave Prince Hall, another country eventually gave Prince Hall the charter for Freemasonry. What? To learn something, uh, to accept something that he uh, already the heritage of? Because that's what Freemasonry is. It's to conceal the truth. That's why they call Shriner. That's why they have the sword, the crescent moon upside down, and, and the sword on top of it so that you won't reveal the truth. You don't never see the crescent moon in the sky upside down. You always see it upright. That's why the, the believing Muslim had the crescent moon like this and, and, and the star. And with the sword, wherever they choose to put it, up under the crescent moon and on the side or through it. Because we reveal the truth. And we die by revealing the truth if God provided. Because Allah has revealed. You sacrifice your, your life, you give your life, your property, and, 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 and you spend your wealth in his cause. This is Al Jihad. This is Quran. And if any Muslims say that they don't believe in Al Jihad, the Holy War struggle, then they are not a true believing Muslim. They're lying to you to your face. Every believing Muslim. Let me tell you some um, so called believing Muslim who, who watered down the truth of Islam. White man, FBI, CIA, a lot of them know the Quran and they know it well. So when you get the lie uh, uh, perpetrating that, oh uh, no, we don't believe in that. Oh uh, no, we don't believe in fight. I, I have heard foreign Muslims say this to white uh, media authorities. 
I looked at, in my mind, I'm looking at this, this foreign Muslim. I, I don't even want to tell you what went through my mind. But I tell you, you never see a foreign Muslim over here fight against oppression. Never. And that's the first, the second rule, the second rule of Islam. The first rule is to worship the oneness of Allah, implement His law. You understand? Worshiping the oneness of Allah. Another rule is to fight against oppression wherever it exists. But the foreigners, they come over there, don't, you don't see them fighting against oppression. Well, the black man is oppressed. You just ride, they want you to come to their mosque, sit in their mosque, and try to be ulamas and imams over you and tell you how to practice Islam, but yet they don't have Islam set up. If you tell me how to practice Islam, you better have it set up. You better be setting it up. And I don't mean just build up a mosque either. Set up the banking system, that which we already have, we are establishing. Set up the, 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 the security system. See, we had an Imam Mahdi military. We had the banking system being established. It, it should be complete by the end of next month. We would have the charter to open up banks. You understand? And that's why I'm saying to the, 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 the so-called rich black folks who are descendants of slaves just as I am in America. You come and invest in yourself by buying a franchise of $5 million so you can open up a bank in your state. And, every, and, and I know in the United States we got enough black millionaires, over $100 million a piece or more, where they can buy into this franchise, open up a bank in their state, in every state in the United States. This is, this is my challenge to all the so-called black millionaires and billionaires. Because I don't care how much money you think you have, in America, you're still a nigger and you're still a slave by the Constitution of the United States of America. And see, that's why they bring down people like Bill Cosby, Michael Jackson. Because those brothers, they had the money to do powerful things. Oprah, they, once Oprah Winfrey, People like Will Smith and all these other people come to grips. I'm just telling you, brothers and sisters, be careful because they're coming after you. Because you can do some powerful things for your people. You can do some powerful things. And as long as you're stuck on stupid, they ain't worried about you. They are not worried about you. But once you, you ever hear any of my, my in invitation, you better believe they're going to try to jam you up. Some of you have to come and just give me money and, 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 and invest and, and donate personally or send somebody to bring it to them because they will trace you. And you can't trust their banks. And that's why we have to set up our own banking system because they are brothers ready to give our reparations. And we cannot run it through their bank because their banks are going to take all of your money. Find ways to trap your money up. So brothers... Do what God puts in your mind and your heart for you to do. But it has to be done. And I, I'm just one individual. All these organizations, all these functions that I'm bringing to you today, I, I'm one individual. I did this myself by the permission of Allah. Again, if you feel like somebody just asking you for something, here's the book, Al Jihad. Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3. It's available. You can download the Volume 1 right now up on my website. www.jihadtv3.com www.jihadtv3.com You can download the book. This, the, the first book is just for... The reason why it's so thick is for... It has Volume 1, 2, and 3 in it. And that's for those whom I train. And I'm also a film producer. That's what I have my degree in communications. Dealing with various, a wide range of communication from politics to religion to science to media. Multimedia, film production. And the first production is Al Jihad, the documentary drama. So we're shooting film, movies and all. We're doing it all. But only in the cause of God. The God, Allah. We're not shooting no foolery stuff. Everything we shoot 
is based upon the freedom and to eliminate oppression all over the entire world. Because, as I said, the political, you had you have Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton at this time running for presidency. Within a month from now, you're going to know who's going to have the presidency uh, starting in 2017. Donald Trump has said to black folks, as I say again, that you are uneducated, you're killing your own people, you have no jobs, and in short, as I said, that's the definition of calling you a nigga to your face in the media. White folks know and understand this language. They know and understand this language. He's just a racist cracker that has lots of money. He ain't no different from that redneck in the woods flying a Confederate flag in South Carolina. You understand? He just won with money. He said you have nothing to lose. Let me tell you, black, so-called black people in America, guess what's yours? Everything on the continent of Africa is yours. That's what you have to lose. And they know this. They don't want you to wake up to that consciousness. And that's what I'm bringing to you today on how to get what is rightfully yours in Africa. Not just America. How to get what is rightfully yours in the Middle East because all the Middle East belong to you, so-called black man Af in, in America. All that. The descendants of slaves in America. All that belongs to you. That's where you come from. And they keep you knocked in the head so you don't realize that. And when you brothers go fight in the military and help the people get their land in the cars, you helping somebody get your land. And see, that's why we have Imam Mahdi military. Because when this thing go down, you got to know what you're dying for. And if you're dying for America, you're going straight to the hellfire. If you're dying for Africa, you're going straight to the hellfire. If you're dying for Saudi Arabia, you're going straight to the hellfire. You understand? If you're dying for, uh, for Rome, Vatican City, whatever, you're going straight for the hellfire. Going straight to the hellfire. Because there's no polytheism will be accepted. I don't care what ground you stand on. And everybody who has died in America, in the cause of America, and continue to die for it, they all went straight to the hellfire. And still there. And they're going there now. And you must understand this. I know it's a hard thing to accept, hard thing to take in, but that's the truth. And that's why Allah reveals in the Quran, save your family from the hellfire. Save your family from the hellfire. You understand? Those who have the truth, save yourself and your family from the hellfire. Because anybody who work and die for America, you're not going to make it. That's why America got to come into this salvation. You have to abandon the the Democratic Party. You have to abandon the Republican Party. You have to abandon those independent parties. And that's why we have Ajay Yuko Islam Political Nation Agency, which is called AIPNA. That's the political agency that we have set up here in America, in the state of South Carolina, that's available for every state in the United States to bring our people into salvation. That's the political agency that you must become a part of. You understand? Because as I said, the colonial period, through the colonial revolutionary war period, through the antebellum period, which is the straight up slavery, through the reconstruction period, all these periods, through the 19th century, up till today, you had your, 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 your civil war, You had the World War I, World War II, and you got your little world wars that you got going on now. Black man, you don't fought in all those wars for America. But everyone that fought in those wars and died in war, even till today, the present wars, Operation Anaconda, there's a storm. Even now, so-called President Barack Hussein Obama, is, he and his administrator are killing Muslims every day in the Middle East. Every day, see, one thing about Barack Obama, he do things and won't tell you. One thing about Bush, Bush will tell you and he'll do it. That's the difference between Barack Obama and, and ex-president um, George W. Bush. Bush will tell you what he's going to do. Barack will tell you later what he have done. But they're both on the same agenda. 
And black man, you're dying and, and thinking you're fighting for freedom, but you're going straight to the hellfire. Because the United States of America is an oppressive government. The, um, the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution makes the United States Constitution a worthless piece of document. And so when you make an oath saying that you're going to protect, you want to defend the Constitution or protect the Constitution, think about all these police officers who are, who are, who are in your town and in your city. Or all the National Guard, or all the military personnel, or all the administrative persons in your city. With workforce and whatever organization they're part of. You're making an oath that you're going to protect the United States Constitution. I'm talking to all the black people that's part of this. You're making a, a statement that you're going to protect the United States Constitution. Guess what? You're making a statement that you're going to protect slavery? You're, going, you're making an a, a, a oath that you're going to protect slavery? You make an oath that you're gonna, you want them to keep you in slavery, because that's what you're doing. It's time for you to wake up. You must go. On, all these people that I mentioned, go on your job and demand them to set you free. To change the constitution because you work for the government. And see what they look at you and how they look at you because you're in that, you you you're part of that administrative, and you know, administration. It's gonna be hard for you. to to come into this if you don't accept the truth. And Allah has made this, this made it easy for Because only, I can't, there's no, like I said earlier, there's no compulsion in religion. There's no compulsion in religion. So, either Allah open you up to what I'm inviting you to, or He keep you closed. Because you can read the Quran, Allah has made the Quran easy. But He has set invisible barriers in the Quran for the disbeliever. So you still read the words, but see that's why you can't you can't destroy a believer, cause Allah removed the veils from the true believer mind and heart and eyes and ears. To the deceiver, he put veils over their heart, the eyes, the ears, coverings. You understand? Now, on this level. When you talk about Donald Trump saying you have nothing to lose, so-called black man in America, not only do you have all that to lose of your country and so-called Africa, which is not really Africa anyway, but for sake of uh, political dialogue, Africa, so-called Africa, all that's yours. You have that to lose. Don't let this, this European uh, Donald Trump tell you what you don't have to lose. He trying to steal what you got. He's he's prophesied he profiting off your dysfunction with his casinos, with the pride, greed, lust, anger, envy, sloth, and jealousy. Cause he know you're going into his casinos. You paying out all that money. You making him rich, and other folks, other groups of people. You don't just get rich. He's playing and getting rich off your weakness. Your dysfunction. Yeah, black man, you have a lot to lose. And not only that, the worst thing, you lose your soul. So these things you have to lose. These things you have to lose. So, with the political, you come, this is your salvation. Adj Islam Political Nation Agency. This is the solution for Abandoning and demolishing the Democratic Party, demolishing the Republican Party, demolishing all those independents who think they got something, something for you, demolishing the Tea Party, any party that's not anything that's not Adjunct Islam Political Nation Agency and its entities and association, it's not right for you. I'm inviting you to this salvation. That Allah has given me to invite you to. And to move on, we come to the nation.